powerful Nerdcast assembles! Stay dandy, baby. A lot of people I've talked to about One Piece have always asked me, Corey, why do you prefer the anime version to the manga? The anime is so much slower. It takes way too much time in building up things. It's just bad half the time. And honestly, I always end up going back to it if only for the voices, the color, the music, the emotion. That's what makes the One Piece anime series for me. It allows me to feel things that I rarely feel when I actually read the manga version. Now, don't get me wrong, I love the One Piece manga. I think it's a lot of fun. I do, however, believe that it is very chaotic and at times can sort of lose itself in all of the craziness that's actually going on, which ends up disconnecting me from the actual material just a little bit. Whenever I watch it in the anime version, however, I always found myself getting sucked in to the story and feeling the emotions of the characters. And I truly felt it in this episode of One Piece, which is all about the true identity of Tonoyas. And it turns out that he's a pretty important and influential character in the land of Wano and has touched the lives of many of its main characters. And this episode right here was absolutely devastating and how sad that it truly was and what it's actually going to be building up to in the next episode of the series. I have a feeling that a lot of people are going to be talking about this one in the next episode, but this one right here I really do believe is worth checking out as it features some of the most sad and terrible images that I've actually seen from the entire franchise, which again, I think is one of the hallmarks of One Piece, where it can have the most goofy, ridiculous, and disproportionate looking characters that can manage to draw the emotions out of someone and actually bring a tear to your eye. So let's go ahead and jump in. Pretty simple episode at the end of the day, however, which is pretty much all about Tonoyas, who's getting ready to be executed in front of all of the citizens of the Wano Kingdom. And Orochi is just going all out here. Not only is he presenting him between, uh, you know, this massive, ridiculous, over-the-top fence, which is surrounded by all of these samurai-esque guards, but he's quite literally crucifying him on a massive cross and putting him in front of everyone before he's about to be tortured and executed. All on the same day as the funeral of Komurasaki, something that even the citizens themselves are also sort of reeling with. It's pretty freaky, and to make matters worse, he wants to make sure that everyone's going to see it, so they're using these light scroll snails, which essentially are these snail projectors to basically put this message across, across the entire Wano Kingdom, which pretty much means that every single character that's currently involved in this arc right now, whether they're in the prison or they're separated from their friends, they're going to see what's actually about to happen to Tonoyas, and it's all basically a build-up to who he truly is and why he's so important in Wano Kingdom, and that's when we get the big revelation that Tonoyas is actually a man who goes by the name of Yasui. And he was originally known as Yasu the Hedgehog, and he was one of the daimyo of the entire Wano Kingdom. Essentially one of the biggest allies of none other than Odin. And he was an important figure in the past of the Wano Kingdom, and was essentially one of its leaders, which is what led it to be one of the most renowned and beautiful kingdoms in the entire One Piece world. It wasn't until Orochi and Kaido and his goons came came over and took things away from him, that the kingdoms finally started to fall into ruin and to subjugation. And seeing the Yasui from the past compared to the one in the present is stark to say the least. The main reason, of course, is the actual look of the character. So, Tonoyas initially came across as this goofy, loud, bumbling, kind of just jokey-esque character. He's got a big old freaking head and a giant afro and he smiles all the time and constantly laughs and cuts jokes. The Yasui from the past, however, is the exact opposite, never really smiling, being a very stern and serious person, and very strong in his convictions and the things that he did. And watching a scene between him and Odin, I have to say, was basically shaking me to my core, as this was the first true time, aside from the intro, where we actually get to see, like, Odin in full, and they still keep him kind of secretive, which I think is kind of silly, to be perfectly honest. Like, he's covered in shadow, there's no need to make him all this mysterious, as especially when you can practically see everything about his character design. But getting to finally see him in the show and interacting with Yasui in the past, I have to say, is 
really awesome. It's something that I've really been waiting to see. And you get to see that Yasui was such a very important person in Odin's life and is what sort of pushed him to become such an amazing figure in the history of the entire kingdom. But Yasui has done so much more. Even after Kaido and Orochi took over everything and Orochi became the Shogun, basically... Yasui spent his entire life basically being someone for the citizens to help them up, to get them through the dark times, and even doing that with a big smile on his face, which of course, all that stuff about Ebisu Town and their smiles is going to be revealed in the next episode, and uh, I have to say that they started to plant the seeds for that in this episode in a really nice way, where when the citizens of Ebisu actually see Yasui up like on the cross they all start to laugh and much to the shock of the other straw hat pirates They're questioning. Why would they be laughing about this? Why can't they seem to control themselves? Why does Yasui have a huge smile and continue to laugh? Why is Toko who is desperately sad over the fact that her father is about to be executed? Constantly continue to laugh herself to death like the freaking Joker it's all going to come to fruition in the next episode here, but not before Yasui can have some big final words, which were very, very awesome. So basically, with a big smile on his face, he's basically calling out Orochi here, saying that he's ruined everything that is the Wano Kingdom, taking away its beauty and destroying it with his greed, essentially calling him a vermin in the process. And one of these weird samurai guards ends up just straight up like shooting him right there. And this is just the beginning of the torturous things that he is going to have to endure as the citizens watch one of these incredible figures like literally just die before them. And it's made even better because there's so many other scenes of watching the characters like actually realize who this character is. And a lot of them affected me in ways that it just didn't when I was reading it in the manga version. I think the one that affected me the most was probably seeing old man Hyogoro actually realize who this was. Another character who within the Wano Kingdom was incredibly influential and such a powerful figure. And to see this old man who has just been through so much and being locked in this prison for so long and worked himself to death and watching him break down in tears over seeing this man was nothing short of heartbreaking. Freaking Kinemon and Inu Arashi sing it as well. Just, I don't know what it was here, but seeing these characters realize who this guy is and knowing that it's only a matter of time before he's going to be killed is just heartbreaking to actually see and it made this episode just so freaking devastating but man i think it was handled so much well and i think this episode also just displayed how amazing the wano kingdom is from an aesthetic point of view the scene where he's actually going up on the cross and lifted up and he actually sees this entire view of the flower capital He's reminded of the beauty of the past, and he realizes that even though his time is probably short with everything that's about to happen, he at least gets one more amazing view of the kingdom that he loves, what he grew up in, and what he hopes to eventually give back to the future generations of the Wano Kingdom. I don't know if it was intentionally done that way, but I think it was handled with a lot of class in this episode, and... Like I said, when I was reading this in the manga, to me, it was just like going through the motions. The anime version is tearing me to pieces. Especially the final scene of watching Toko just absolutely break down to that to-be-continued screen, just <clears throat> right here, guys. So, what's the rundown on this episode of One Piece? Well, it was a really sad episode, but it was hopeful, and if you ever wanted to see Usopp riding on a bear, then this is the episode for you. There are some moments of levity in this episode. Like I said, I really love the moment of watching uh, the Straw Hat Pirates actually help out the citizens of Ebisu who are desperately running to try and see what's going on with Yasui and to possibly try and save him. And Nico Robin and Nami and Usopp, they're, they're, they're like helping all the citizens out as they're running through all of Orochi's guards. And it's really fun to actually see. And I'm never going to get the image of Usopp riding on a bear out of my head. It was just incredible. It was really awesome. But again, th this episode is all about Yasui, his past, his influence on people, and his final moments in the Wano Kingdom. And man, it's just beautifully done with the voice acting, the emotion, the music, just the long lingering shots of those, you know, th those rooftops of Wano and the, the Sakura blossoms and the beautiful look of the flower capital. It's captivating me in a way that the manga version simply could not do. Maybe I'm overselling this episode just a little much, but I'm just trying to be honest with the way that the episode actually affected me. I thought that it was actually really strong material. And I've said it in the previous episodes how Yasui has impressed me so much more in the anime version when actually compared to the manga. And again, I think they're just doing a really fantastic job 
with all of that stuff. So what more can I say? I just really liked this episode, and I think that they're actually moving really good with the pacing with this one. I, I thought that they were going to draw this one out maybe just a lot more, but the fact that we got flashback sequences, and we got all the stuff with Yasui, the Straw Hat Pirates, and everyone reacting, and, and I mean everyone. Like, everybody knows what's actually going on here. Uh, so I thought that it was a really impressive one, and I highly recommend all One Piece fans to check this one out and to check out the next couple of episodes because it's only going to get crazier from here. It's also a great introduction a little bit more to the personality and character of Odin who was shown off in this episode, which I thought was really great. So, yeah, I loved this episode. I'm giving it a 5 out of 5. I think it's one of those episodes of One Piece that's mandatory viewing, especially if you just want to get, like, to the core of what this entire arc is all about and getting to see a really important character who's going to have a massive ripple effect on the future of the series. So, yeah, I loved this one. Like I said, maybe I'm overselling it a bit, but you got my thoughts on it. I want to get yours. Make sure to sound off in the comment section below and tell me what you want to see from the future of the One Piece anime series and the Wano arc and what you thought about this episode right here. Is it affecting you the same way it's affecting me? Are you just not feeling that way? Let's just have a big discussion all about this episode in the comment section below. So thank you guys so much for watching this review. And make sure to subscribe to the channel for more anime reviews and discussions just like this one. If you liked this video, maybe consider hitting that like button. Not only does it help out these videos, but it ensures that a lot more people are going to be able to see my content. I also want to thank all my patrons who have been supporting me through my Patreon page. You guys are awesome with your monthly donations and the feedback on all of the channel videos that I'm doing. Remember, first-time donators, I will review an anime series of your choice, so make sure to do that. I will accept any and all donations, even the very small ones. And remember, I'd also love to add your name to this list of super awesome people who support this channel every single day. So thank you guys so much for watching this review. I'll see you all next time. And as always, stay damn, damn, baby.